All right. Last one of the day, right? Pair up a sow with our uh, little man representing breast cancer awareness here. Good for you. All right, here we go. Take you into your leg lift. Okay, let's take a sow into his leg lift. Like the, it's like that. It's like the Dodgers over over here. They look like the Dodgers. Didn't Bobby Valentine coach the Dragons? Oh, forever. I think I thought he coached the Dragons. Yeah, you're right. It is Mr. Baseball. <laughs> All right. So you're not too bad. You're better than most. You're you're not you're not your head's not up over there. I mean, let me see if you're. Yeah, you're right out of your lift. So good, you got you got a little bit of momentum forward, just like some of these these high high velocity guys. You're not so balanced up. That's good for you, man. Let's see what you do with that. Let's take you into your load. Okay, so you're moving, you're falling. Your lift leg's trying to stay back a little bit. You're now starting to get out. Force vector's coming down, but we're losing. Losing that load. Now, I know you don't have a lot of leg strength, so that's a big challenge for you, and that was a big challenge for you in those sled drills. But as you get stronger, you've got to be able to fall lower, lower that center of gravity more um, so we can get some more force through the ground. The other thing is, look, you're cocking your arm already. We can't cock that arm early. We should still be down at that position. Let's take a sow there. So notice he does that extended lift leg. Look, look, does that not look like he's falling? Is that not a fall right there? Is that fall? So when his lift leg gets where yours is, look at the difference. You can see, you can see here the way more linear force vector you can see a load. He's flexed. He's sitting on that leg. Here, it looks like you're you're already starting starting to shift your 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 weight forward. So if, if I saw where your weight was centered, it would probably be centered right there. I'd say his weight is more centered back, maybe back here somewhere. So he's he's still got more load on that leg. Um, so now he can peak force. I feel the next two frames, you're shifted forward immediately. Let's see, one. Too. You're almost there, and look at that back leg. It's just, it's just, as your front side opens, it's just un unraveling or losing torque, torsion, and just rolling over. So no force, just a rollover, right? Y'all notice this? We've seen this on everyone. This was the low velocity guy. This is the high velocity guy, right? Big difference, right? That's a big difference. Different movement. Okay, so you hit front foot. Let's see when you stabilize that leg. Still moving on me. There it goes. Stabilize right there. Okay. Let's take a sow. Watch him. This is in slow mo, so it, a lot of frames. So look, kind of like you. He's fighting to stay closed. You stay closed well on that front leg. You just when it opened, it just un everything unraveled instead of instead of extended. So notice how right here, even though it looks slow. Oh, see, I can't get it faster. There we go. Look at that. See the drive coming out of that position, that back leg extending? Okay, so we see that drive into that front foot, kicks that ankle just before front foot strike, and then watch, he locks it up immediately. Boom, like a car crash. So he, he's locked up right here, hips open. And look at you. This is the point where you locked up here. Your knee's still moving. Boom, it locked up right there. So what's the difference? What's the difference? Besides that, what else is the difference? That's true, but what else is the difference? What are we seeing? What's the key difference here? It's been the it's been the the motto of the day, right? Anybody else want to help out? Yeah, we see 
He's got separation, you don't. His, you're throwing, he's not, right? What's the two-phase delivery? Stride, separate, throw, right? Separation was what connects those two phases, stride and throw. Okay. So we don't see that separation, right? So can, can your lower half power get into that arm now that your front foot has stopped that, that movement? No, because it's going to throw in, in a millisecond, it's going to throw. It doesn't have any time to get in that arm. Okay. So not until we can load better like him, until you can find more leg strength to get lower as you move forward, and then instead of just opening and rolling over your backside, opening and extending and powering and pushing off and driving in the front foot strike through your, through your backside. Once we can do that, we will call, we'll, create, give, we'll create an opportunity. And that's another thing, guys. I think, like Dennis, when you, you said you kind of let that aha moment, when those hips come up from a rotational aspect, we were just looking at it as a linear aspect. Watch what happens in a rotational aspect of it. We, how important is it to stabilize your front leg as quickly as possible? We've seen that? It's critical, right? Watch what getting your hips up early or through early from a rotational aspect, watch what it does to your front leg. So if I extend before my front foot lands, that pushes my hips up. And when my front foot lands with my hips up, that means the back hip is coming forward. And that means the front hip is going back. What happens when the front hip goes back? Y'all seeing that? Look at this. I'm pushing this hip back, and what's my knee doing? So what happens if I land with my hips still closed? What happens if I land with my hips still closed? And my hips rotate late? What happens? My leg doesn't stabilize, right? So you want to stabilize your leg better? Get your hips open early. Opening those hips early takes that hip back, creates that quicker stability. So that's why it's like, the, the, that's the threshold. It's like if you don't peak your forces just before front foot strike enough to move your hips around, you'll never stabilize your front leg. You'll never separate. Nothing will ever happen. Jordan Zimmerman always used to tell us that he always felt like he hit him with a sledgehammer here when he landed. When he landed, right. He said, he said it just feels like somebody whacked him and just, I stopped. And you know what? If someone told me that, I'd say... You, if someone told me that, I'd say, you throw 95 to 100. I'd know it. Exactly. I'd know it. I'd know it. You would know it too, right, Kevin? Someone said that to me, that when I land, it feels like a sledgehammer hits my front hip. You know, I, or my front leg. I'd say, you throw hard. You throw really hard. Yeah, Royer. Yeah. All right, so from there, watch you in the... You, um, Aiden, you have a great front leg to pitch release. You really do. It's exceptional. I mean, if you watch, your front leg, look, this is going to, this is going to prove the ASMI study that we're more different early, but more the same at the end. Watch Aiden from here to pitch release, and then watch a sow. Okay, see that? Watch a sow. Even though they're different frame rates. Do they almost look identical? <coughs> they look identical, but does that mean a lot to me? No. That's the icing on the cake, but just like that ASMI study, high velocity, low velocity pitchers are more dissimilar early in their deliveries and more the same at the end. You can look like a guy at the end and still not even throw nothing or not even close to his ball speed. So Aiden, uh, Aiden if you can take his early moves, and use it with your finishing moves, that's when you're throwing hard. Make sense? Any questions?